last little bit here, we're going to rationalize the denominator. And just so you get it, if I wrote up here, if you say I like Arnold Schwarzenegger, you sound like you're in a movie. Now, what happens when we're dealing with square roots? Sometimes we're left with something like this, like the square root of 5 over the square root of 2. It happens when you're dividing. When you have a square root in the denominator, it's basically just bad form. It's not nice to have a denominator that is an irrational number, that will be a decimal that goes on forever. It's just bad form. So what we're going to do is, whenever we have a fraction that has a radical in the denominator, we're going to get rid of it. So like this example here, uh, the square root of 5 over the square root of 2. What I'm going to do is, to get rid of this, we're going to multiply this by something so that there's no square root on the bottom. And we can pick a lot of things, but the best thing we're going to pick is we're going to pick this denominator as 1. So if I wrote square root of 2 over square root of 2, this is okay to multiply by because the square root of 2 over the square root of 2 is just 1. So I'm not really changing anything over here. But what's going to happen on the denominator? The square root of 2 times the square root of 2. Well, aren't there two 2's? Or the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is the square root of 4. And the square root of 4 is just 2. By multiplying by this, the square root goes away. On the top, the square root of 5 times the square root of 2, this makes the square root of 10. This is in proper form. This is how the answer should be written. No square root on the bottom, square root on the top. Square root of 5 over square root of 2 is exactly the same as the square root of 10 over 2. This is called rationalizing the denominator. We're making the bottom just a whole number. And we do that by multiplying by whatever the denominator is, top and bottom. Square roots will cancel, and you just got to figure out what you get on the top. Um, so let's try one. Like if I give you the square root of 2 times the square root of 3. Or, sorry, square root of 2 over the square root of 3. Well, I don't like the square root in the denominator. It's bad form. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply by the denominator, top and bottom. So the denominator is square root of 3. Because I'm multiplying top and bottom, this is 1, one whole. Multiplying anything by one whole doesn't change the value. It just might change the numbers. All right, what do we get? Well, along the bottom, square root of 3 is square root of 3 is square root of 9, which is 3. That's the whole point. On top, the square root of 2 times the square root of 3 makes the square root of 6. There's nothing I can do, but this is the correct form. No square root in the denominator. And of course, you know, there could be more complex examples like uh, 3 square root of 2 over the square root of 3. Okay, again, don't like the square root in the denominator, so I'm going to multiply top and bottom by the denominator. Because I'm multiplying top and bottom, I'm not going to change it, just change the value. So across the bottom, the denominator, square root of 3 times square root of 3 is just 3. Across the top, there's this 3 hanging out in front. The square root of 2 times the square root of 3 makes the square root of 6. And now this one, look, I could simplify a little bit. I got a 3 over 3. They cancel each other out. Yay! So that cancels with that one, and all that's left is square root of 6. So square 3 root 2 over the square root of 3 is the same as the square root of 6. Okay, if 
if you need to write this down, uh, I'm going to clear it real quick and do my one last example. Okay, we get this, uh, this is probably the most complex it could ever get. Uh, let's say if I had 2 square root of 5 over 3 square root of 8. Okay, don't like it because there's a square root on the bottom. So what I'm going to do is multiply by this radical so that it goes away. So I'm just going to rewrite it again. 2 square root of 5 over 3 square root of 8. And we're going to multiply this by this radical, square root of 8. I have to multiply top and bottom because this makes one whole, and I can do that. It's allowed. And what am I going to get? Across the bottom, square root of 8 and square root of 8. That's square root of 64, which is just 8. This 3 is hanging out in front. It's multiplying it. So square root of 8 to cancel make the 8. So it's 3 times 8 on the bottom. These two is where the 8 came. Square root of 64 made 8. So it's 3 times 8. And then across the top. Uh, we have a 2, and then the 5 and the 8 will make 40. We'll deal with those in a sec. So this is what I'm looking at right now. This one. I could probably simplify this a little bit, right? Because isn't, uh, isn't 44 times 10? 3 times 8 is 10. Up here on the top. I can simplify this last square root just a little bit. Uh, the square root of 4 is 2. So this is going to come out as a 2. Let me rewrite. So there was a 2. The square root of 4 was also a 2. And yet a square root 10 was left over all over 24. So on the top you have 4 square root of 10 over 24. And then our last little bit. This is still a fraction. We could simplify this. The 4 over 24. What does that simplify to? 4 over 24 is 2 over 12 which is 1 over 6. And then there was the we can put the 1 here, but you don't really need to put a 1. Let's leave it as square root of 10 over 6. So all that work to see that 2 root 5 over 3 root 8 is exactly the same as the square root of 10 over 6. Much cleaner, and it's nicer because the denominator is not a radical. And that's what's called when you rationalize the denominator.